Welcome back to the Simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be increasing the maximum amount of pets that a player can equip at a single time. So instead of only being able to have three pets equipped, we're going to be allowing the player to have up to five pets equipped in our game. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a brand new Roblox development video. I also have Patreon. If you guys would like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys go and check that out. With that being said, let's hop right into it. So allow the player to equip more pets is actually really simple. What we're going to do is go inside of the replicated storage, inside of the configs folder, and we're going to open up our pets module script. Inside of here, if we scroll down towards the bottom of the script, we can actually see the function right here, which is get max equipped pets. Now this function is used both on the server and the client side. On the client side, it's used to display in the pet inventory GUI how many pets the player can actually have equipped. And we also use this on the server side to calculate the max amount of pets that the player can have equipped to make sure that they're not able to equip more than they should be able to. That's the good thing about using module scripts is that this function is going to be used in a bunch of different locations and we only have to update or make any changes to this one single function that's inside of this module script. So making these changes is really simple and easy to do and we only have to change it in one spot versus updating it on both the server and the client side. Now currently how we're actually calculating this number is what well, we're not actually really doing any math. Basically we have this default max equipped pets variable set towards the top of our script which is just set to three. And inside of this function all we do is create a variable, set it to that number and then we just return that variable at the end of this. So there's no math really being done here and the number isn't changing at all. So to add on to this function, what we're actually going to do is increase the max amount of pets that the player can have equipped based on the amount of pets that they have collected inside of their pet index. So for example, when the player collects 50, 100, and maybe 150 pets, then we want to increase their maximum amount of equipped pets by one each time. Now doing this is really simple. What we're going to do is create a brand new variable called total collected pets. And that's going to be equal to pets. And we have that function directly below this one called get total collected pets. So we're going to use that function and we're going to pass through the data, which is also passed to this function as well. So now that variable is going to be set to the amount of pets that the player has actually collected. And since we have that number, we can start creating if statements to check how many pets they actually have collected. If they meet a certain threshold, then we're going to increase the amount variable that we have right up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if total collected pets is greater than or equal to 50, then, and then what we're going to do inside of this if statement is we're just going to add one to the amount variable. So now if the player has collected at least 50 pets, then they're going to be able to equip up to four pets. And then we can do this again. So we're going to say if total collected pets is greater than or equal to 100, then we're going to add one to this amount again. So once the player collects up to 50 pets, then they're going to be able to equip up to four pets. And then once they collect 100, they'll be able to equip up to five pets. Now we also have this comment here for do the game pass check here, which we will do in a future episode when we actually implement all the game passes into our game. But as of right now, if you have 50 pets in your game, then you're able to test this. Currently in our game though, we actually have about six pets actually set up. So what I'm going to do just for testing purposes is I'm going to say if the player has collected one or more pets, then they're going to get an additional slot. And if the player has collected three or more pets, then they're going to get another slot as well. So now that we've set these numbers lower, so they actually work for our game, we can go ahead and start up the game and test this out. Now, once we get into our game, we can see that our three pets are currently equipped. And when we look in our pet inventory, we can see that we're actually able to equip up to five pets. The reason for that is because if we look at our pet index, we actually have six pets equipped. And remember, our if statements are for one and three. So we obviously meet both of those numbers. That's why we're able to equip plus two pets. Now you're going to actually run into an issue when you try to equip more pets. So we're only actually able to have three following us at a time. And I'll show you why that is. If we actually click on this error and we go towards the top of our script, we can see that we have a variable called pet positions. And inside of this table, there are three other tables. So we basically set up the position and orientation for three pets to follow us, but we didn't set up the extra two. Now that players are able to equip more than three pets. So of course we're going to have to fix this. So what we're going to do is stop our game and then we're going to want to open up this pet follow script now if you don't know where that's located go inside of your starter player inside of your starter player scripts and then right here you have the pet follow local script and you can go ahead and open that up now there's actually a pretty easy way to test and move pets on your own to figure out how you want the position to be set up and how we can actually do this is first we want to go inside of the pet follow function down to the line where we play the tween and we actually just want to comment this out so no tweens are playing i'll tell you why we have to do this in a second but now that we've commented that out we can go ahead and start up our game once again now once we start up our game you might have some errors down below but that's perfectly fine you can kind of ignore them for right now but now we can see that we actually have three pets following us and they're not moving up and down like they were previously and that's because we commented out the tween now if we want to be able to move these all we have to do is go inside of the workspace open up your character and inside of your character expand the humanoid root part and inside of here you're going to have a couple of different attachments now when you click on an attachment you should be able to see like a little arrow or a green dot right there when i click on another one you can see that it's moving from pet to pet to pet or even ones on my character as well but we can see that three of these attachments basically appear inside of the pets and then 
additionally, if we look at the properties of the attachment, when we select them, we can see the position and orientation. And based on that, we can look inside of our pet follow script, go to our pet positions table, and we can look at the position of one of the attachments. And we can basically find the table inside of our pet positions table that those properties match. So for instance, this position is matching this position of the attachment. And so is the orientation as well. So we know that this is the table that this belongs to. Now, with that being said, once you have the specific attachment selected, you can go up to your home tab up here and click on move, or you can hit control two to actually get this like move toggle set up. And now you can actually freely move the pet and you can see that the position property of this attachment is updated as well. Additionally, you can select the rotate tool or hit control and four, and now you're able to rotate the pet as well. And when we rotate the pet, we can see that the orientation is updated for the pet as well. So now we're able to freely move and rotate the pet any way that we want to. And then we can basically just take the position and the orientation properties directly from here and create a brand new table inside of here. I would recommend basically just copying and pasting one of our old tables. And now that we've duplicated that table, we can then go ahead, copy the position property, paste the position right there, copy the orientation property, paste the orientation right there. And now we set up the fourth position for when a player equips the fourth pet. And then additionally, since we're able to equip up the five pets now, we might as well add another table to this so that we set up the fifth position. And then we would just change the position and orientation here as well. Now, the reason that I'm showing you this is because there are so many different ways that you can line up your pets or have them set up for how you want them to follow you. Some people might like my method of basically having three directly behind you. And then how I plan on doing it is having one pet in between these two and then one pet in between these two as well. And that's how I would like for my pet follow system to be set up. Other people like it when all the pets are basically in a line directly behind them. And that's easy enough to do. Just go ahead, play with your attachments, rotate the pet a little bit, reposition it. And although that they're not lined up perfectly, I'm just showing you that this is a way that you can easily set up the layout for how you want your pets to actually follow you. So then once again, once you find your setup, you're going to want to copy the position and orientation of each of these different attachments and set them up inside of the pet positions table. Now, another thing that you want to keep in mind is that the table position inside of our pet positions table actually matters. So for example, this table is how the first pet equipped will actually appear. Based on this position and orientation, this pet will appear centered directly behind the player. So if we go inside of the clicking simulator and we just equip one pet, we can now see that that pet appears directly behind us. Then if we go ahead and equip another pet, we can see that this now appears to the left of the player. And if we look at the pet follow, we can see that the pet appears to the left of the player because of how this position is set up. And then with the third position, this will appear on the right. So if we go ahead and equip another pet, we can see that this now appears on the right side of the player. Now, these two tables were just kind of created just for show. How I actually want the pets to be displayed is like I said, I want there to be a pet between the left and the middle one. And then I also want the fifth pet to appear between the right and the middle one as well. Now I played around with the position and orientation for this setup on my own off screen, as I just explained how to do this on your own. So you guys can set up those positionings however you want. And then these are the two tables that I'm going to be using for the fourth and the fifth pet. So now if we go ahead and start our game, we can see that we have three pets equipped. Let's just go ahead and click equip best. And we can see that we now have five pets all equipped at one time. And in my opinion, it looks nice how they're following us. I like the setup, but I just explained how you can easily position them on your own as well. So if you want a different setup, you definitely can do that as well. So now that we have enough positions for how many pets the player can have equipped, the last thing that we want to do is go back down to the actual pet follow function, go to where we commented out that tween, and then we want to uncomment that. And now that we've uncommented that, once all of our pets are following us, we can see that the tween is working once again, and they're kind of animated a little bit. And I might not have ever clarified why you need to disable that tween. The reason that we need to disable that tween is because if we want to mess with the attachment, we cannot actually do that because of the tween. So the tween basically locks the position and orientation, and we're not really able to play around with their positioning while the tween is going on. So that's why we commented it out. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. If you guys did enjoy, as always, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a brand new episode. I also have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.